In this video, we're going to be making some eye-catching animations for CG advertising and architecture. Before we get started with today's video, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. If you are interested in all of the perks that we offer, I will have a link to go check us out in the description down below. Hello everyone, I'm super excited about today's video just because we're going to be talking about a very cool visual effect shot of a building basically building itself up from the ground up. This is very popular in the architecture world as you need to, uh, you know, visualize architecture or add stuff onto architecture. And so I thought I'd make a cool little animation today that we can achieve that result. Of course, like always, if you want to actually work along with us, I will provide all of my files for my Patreon members. Go ahead and check that out in the description down below if you want to go ahead and get started. So if you are a Patreon member, go ahead and download that down below but we have a scene right here i already have everything camera tracked and then also some of the uh, default render settings set up in the scene i actually just released a camera tracking tutorial of how i actually camera track professionally and so if you are interested in that i will have that in the uh, description down below as well it's the exact same process that i did for this video if you do want to work along with us i will provide the footage for free uh, so if you want to go ahead and camera track that yourself you can still work along with us for free okay so let's start by importing in our asset now I'm going to be using a Kitbash Cargo asset. This is the Office High Rise uh, A asset so you can find the link in the description below to download cargo i'm not sponsored or anything by them if you do want to work along with us for free i've also provided some free assets that are going to be a little bit different than this but you can still do the exact same process it might be a little different just based on the asset that you actually pick but uh, you should get a similar process that we're going to do today so i'm going to select this i'm going to go ahead and import it in my scene i just downloaded the 2k jpeg i find that's kind of the best use case for this uh, distance away from camera if we were a little bit closer i may uh, go ahead and download a 4k uh, png file or anything like that uh, it just eats up some more file size so uh, we'll just give that a second to load into the program there we go and i already scaled up the scene very important for this specific project not only because it uh, exactly lines up in our scene like this but also because of the lighting in the scene it's going to be very important to match the correct scale because then the sun direction and the sun intensity is going to look off if it's not scaled correctly Anyway, let's go ahead and position where we want this building. Uh, there's a, actually a nice little road here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to position it on the road so that it kind of makes sense that it'd be leading into the building like that. I might also scale it up just ever so slightly um, just to uh, match that a little bit better. So we'll get it right there. And yeah, there is the building into the scene. You can make sure it's camera tracked uh, nicely, but as you can see, it is. Uh, now, I'm not going to be worrying about uh, some of these cars and stuff down here. Some of the actual concrete is going to be covering that up. We can maybe try to scale just the concrete section up just a little bit to cover up some of those cars. If I was actually doing this for a client, there are some cleanup uh, that I would have to do for those cars, but we won't worry about that today. Anyway, there we go. We have our building into the scene now. I'm going to go ahead and start organizing some things. So if I right click and select hierarchy, I can hit M and I'm going to create a new building collection down here. Uh, now, this building is very interesting because it has some different parts of the building. Usually some building assets will actually be one uh, solid object. And the nice thing about this building as well is if I come out of camera mo uh, mode, I can actually fly into this and you can see there's actually some interior of the building, such as like some trash cans. Uh, more importantly, some of the stuff that we'll actually see in our camera are some of these concrete pillars and stuff it's going to allow a lot of cool kind of animation to be done of basically this building being built from scratch so what i want to do is i want to go ahead and separate out all of those interesting objects so that we can go ahead and animate them separately because right now for instance this whole building is one uh, asset right here such as the windows all the interior bits and stuff like that i kind of want uh, them to animate separately and so that is what i'm going to do now uh, this object is already separated and looks nice so i'm going to go ahead and hide that i'm just going to hide all the objects as I separate them. The uh, ground is already kind of separated how I like, so I'm going to hide that as well. And then this little section down here is already uh, highlighted as well. However, we do have some posters on the side. I'm going to uh, just going to go ahead and join those uh, objects to be as one. I don't want to have to uh, animate these separately. I just want them all to pop in as one. So I'm going to select all of these objects right here, making sure I select the building last. That's our highlighted yellow object. I can hold Control and then hit J. That'll join the objects together. And there we go. Now we have uh, this as one uh, solid object. So I'll go ahead and hit H to hide that as well. We also have some nice little branches over here. I'm going to go ahead and hide these two as well because they're their own uh, individual object. We'll add animation to those individually. Next, I want to go ahead and uh, do some of the windows and all of these scaffolds 
building and stuff here on the side of the building we can go ahead and select the building i can go into the edit mode and the easiest way i found to do this is if i go ahead and select like this piece right here i can go up here to select we're going to select similar and then material and there you go it's selected all of this material in the entire object so that is super nice we can go ahead and hit p to separate by selection there we go so now it is its own object so if I select that, you can see it's separated from all of the window assets and everything. So that looks good. Let's H to hide that. Next is the actual windows and the scaffolding. I'm gonna separate them uh, by material again. So the exact same process, go into edit mode. I'm gonna select the window material here, select. We're gonna select similar material right there. P selection, there we go. So now we have all of this separated. So I'll hit H to hide that. And you can go further if you want to actually have some more intricate animation and stuff. But I'm actually gonna leave it here. Uh, there is some more uh, kind of stuff up here as well. You can get really intricate up here. Unfortunately for our shot, it's gonna be so high up that honestly, I'm just gonna leave all of this as kind of one object up here. So I can just go ahead and select both of these objects and uh, control J to join those uh, again over there. Now, one thing I didn't mention that I quickly want, just wanted to point out, uh, if you do download any of the assets and for some reason it actually has some modifiers up here the join uh, is not going to allow you to actually go ahead and apply that so uh, you have to go ahead and apply the modifiers a super easy way to go ahead and apply all the modifiers is to just go ahead and select all the objects that you want to apply modifiers so for instance i'll just select all my building assets up here then we can actually right click and if you go to convert to mesh uh, that is how you apply all the mod modifiers in one go for all of your selected objects just want to bring that up uh, just because this next step we're actually going to be adding a modifier and it's very important to go ahead and apply everything beforehand anyways we now have all of our objects actually separated out into their own uh, respective category and stuff and so this is uh, going to give us a lot more flexibility on what we can actually build from the start and in case you're doing like construction animation or uh, if you just want to visualize the actual uh, you know construction process in an interesting way for your client so we can go ahead I'm going to come out here uh, let's start building the actual uh, ground up uh, so what I'm going to do is let's hide all of these ones up here. We only really care about the bottom section right now. And so I'll hide all of the top section uh, for now. And so what we're going to be using, we'll start with the concrete section down here first. Uh, what we're going to be using is the build modifier. So if I type in build, you can see there is a build modifier. Uh, right now it's starting at frame one and it goes for 100 frames. And so it's pretty self-explanatory at frame one, it'll start building itself. Uh, now uh, you can also randomize the actual building process and you can set a random seed if you don't like that. And so the randomize is just gonna pick random faces to actually go ahead and uh, you know hide and unhide and build the actual model up. Uh, some of these will be using random, some other ones will be uh, letting the program kind of use its own uh, default path to actually build that up. So this is where we can play around with it. Uh, so for the first one, I think one to 100 is perfectly fine. I might honestly decrease it to like 75 just so it's a little bit faster. So there we go. We have it building. And then of course down here as well, this little building, the nice thing now is we've uh, selected as one object. So now we can just add one build modifier versus having to add it uh, specifically to the posters and all that stuff uh, before. So let's see this. Uh, this one builds a little bit too fast. So some of these are a little bit finicky. I think it tries to build the bigger faces first and then uh, some of the smaller faces. So for this one, we're gonna go ahead and hit randomize. Uh, now this is totally, uh, you know, dependent on what you actually want the look to be. But as you hit randomize, you can see it slowly starts to build everything and you can see more of the interior. That's kind of my goal here. We do have some posters on the backside here. Honestly, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those since they are on the backside. We're not gonna be able to see them in the actual shot. So uh, that I can just delete. So there we go. We have it building in the uh, exact same process applies to the rest. Uh, I can go ahead and just walk you through kind of my thought process here. This one, since it's on the outside of everything, it's going to be covering up a lot of the cool detail inside. So I'm going to do this one last. Uh, some of this frame I can do first. I uh, kind of like that this is going up as uh, the building is being built. Uh, so let's go ahead and add another build modifier. This one we can start around like, I don't know, 40 frames in. And we'll just see how that looks now it does lag up a little bit and so you might have to uh you know just let it play out a little bit sometimes uh that builds a little bit too fast so i'm gonna do 150 i think uh just add 50 more frames into the sequence so it builds a little bit slower uh yeah that is looking pretty cool and now we can do the uh the windows i'm actually gonna save for the later half just because i want to be able to see all of this nice detail right here um, the pillars and stuff are just so much cooler to actually uh, kind of see pop into the scene So that's why I kind of want to stage these uh, back to back from each other. So let's go ahead add a modifier build 
and then uh, we'll start this, I don't know, around like 80, I think. Uh, I'm kind of just guesstimating, and then uh, we can see how we like it. So yeah, this is another one where it just kind of pops in for some reason. Uh, let's hit randomize and just see how that handles it. So there you go. That's a little bit more interesting uh, like that. And then now we can uh, settle about doing some of this uh, section up here. We'll do that around, I would say, 140. So another build, 140 down here. Uh, and we'll see if 100 looks good. Yep, I might hit randomize again up here just so it's a little bit more random and not just poofing in. There we go, so that looks pretty good. Uh, next, let's Alt-H and do the windows now. So we have two more objects to do. We'll do the windows. And I want the windows to kind of come in at the very end. So we'll do like 180 or something like that. And of course, uh, we gotta make sure that they're all in by the time it actually comes. And so we'll do like 50 frames maybe so that the windows are already set by uh, frame 230. So let's see, it's all popping in. And then the windows start to populate. It's a little bit hard to tell just because the FPS is low. But uh, just do, I actually like how it builds it up from the bottom up. And so I wasn't able to get that in my final result, but uh, as you can see, uh, play around with it, you know, maybe select randomize if you want, but I kind of like that result right there. And then finally, all H one more time, we can do uh, this little structure outside of the building. We'll add another build modifier. And this one should come in at the very, very end, kind of once all the windows are somewhere around here. So we'll do like 220 maybe. And then it's gotta be finished. I'll say by 270. So that would be 50 frames. And let's kind of play that last little bit. Again, it's very, very slow, but this is where we can maybe render out a viewport animation and see. So there you go. That uh, renders out totally fine for me. You can, of course, play around with it however you want. Uh, now, uh, of course, like I just said, if you do want to see, uh, oh, we forgot about these things over here. Honestly, I'm going to join these two together. Uh, J to, uh, or Control J to join those two together. We're going to build this around let's say we'll say uh 125 and 100 frames is fine um so anyway like i was saying if you want to see the actual animation without having to render out everything like that what you can actually do this is, is a quick tip you can come out here to view and then viewport uh, render animation so if you click that it'll go ahead and try to like play your viewport and if you're on the solid shading it'll kind of play that so it renders a little bit faster uh, and then, of course, you can view it afterwards by coming up here and then uh, render view animation. So you can actually see the animation of it going, make sure that everything is correct up there. And so that's kind of the uh, the process I did to actually check that the animation was solid on my end before actually rendering this out. Um, so we can do that. OK, so anyways, I went ahead and did some compositing color just to show what a final result like this uh, could look like. Of course, if you do want a full uh, kind of compositing and all that tutorial, please let me know if we get more than let's say 300 likes in this video i might uh, end up doing a part two to this to actually show my entire process uh, but i think this result is pretty cool especially if you have a client that is into architecture and need to actually plan out a build building and uh, see it in a cool way kind of being built up and stuff like that add some flair to it i think helps a lot with clients but as you can see this result i think it's uh, pretty cool and uh, very achievable inside of blender in a small time frame but anyways thanks so much for watching everybody i hope you learned a thing or two from this entire process uh, of course, join our Patreon and Discord. I'd love to have you guys in the description down below. Uh, we're trying to build an amazing community over on Discord, so I'd greatly appreciate it if you considered going over there. Uh, but anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.